The Buccaneers are going to be without two defensive starters this weekend when they can win and clinch the NFC South. That and more on today's episode of Locked on Bucks. You are Locked on Buccaneers, your daily Tampa Bay Buccaneers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up and welcome into this live Friday episode of Locked On Bucks, your daily podcast covering the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Day. We want to thank you for making Locked On Bucks your first listener view every single day. Don't forget you can subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, you can follow along on Twitter. I am James Yarko at JRCO underscore Bucks. He is David Harrison at D Harrison82. I am the deputy editor of SB Nations BucksNation.com. David is a staff writer over at BucksGameDay.com, Sports Illustrated's fan nation site covering the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And we are here with you every Monday through Friday, along with our everydayers and our every livers. And for that, we want to share our appreciation for your support of the show right now you can become a locked on bucks insider where you get news the inside scoop and exclusive content delivered directly to your phone you get to text with me which is always a good time and you can do so by heading over to join subtext.com slash locked on bucks this episode is brought to you by linkedin jobs linkedin jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on nfl that's linkedin.com slash locked on nfl to post your job for free terms and conditions do apply um texting james jarko fun time confirmed unless <laughs> you are an ohio state fan and then about twice a year it's not fun yeah. Outside of that, it's fun. Can, can confirm. Yeah. On this episode, we're going to be making our predictions for this weekend's game between the Buccaneers and the New Orleans Saints. We're going to give you our keys to the game. But first, we got to talk about some guys who are going to be lazy this weekend and not do their jobs, uh, all because of injury. Shots Audio fired. people, I threw up air quotes. I am fully joking. Please understand that I'm fully joking. Shaquille Barrett dealing with a groin injury. Nobody wants to deal with that. He is out for this weekend. Mm -hmm. Carlton Davis, still in concussion protocol. He is out this weekend. Coquife with a shoulder injury. That is a big shoulder, so that is a big shoulder injury out this weekend. Mike Green, Rakeem Jarrett, uh, still in their 21-day return windows, but they are not returning. Those windows are still open. Nobody is doubtful. Nobody is questionable. But Shaq, Carlton, and low-key, Coquife, very, very significant losses for this Buccaneers team this weekend. Yeah, it's something that I mentioned early on this week uh, when looking at that Shaq Barrett groin injury. And I mentioned like, look, this is an injury that caused Levante David to miss a couple of games. So I kind of expected Shaq Barrett to be out. And I honestly, maybe somebody in the chat remembers, David, maybe you remember off the top of your head. I can't remember the last time we had Carlton Davis and Jamel Dean like starting in the same game. Like it, it seems like it just doesn't happen ever. It probably happened last week, but uh, then Carlton Davis leaves with the concussion. He's in the protocol. He's not playing, but you know, it's nice that they have a guy like Zion McCollum to uh, to fall back on because he has been playing fantastic football. So overall, like, yeah, it, it stinks to lose Shaq Barrett. It stinks to lose Carlton Davis. It stinks to lose an elite tight end one like Co Keefe. But the guys that are coming in and filling in for those players, you have Yaya Diaby, you have Zion McCollum. I don't think these injuries are as brutal for the Buccaneers as somebody like an Antoine would be or somebody like a Vita Vea or somebody like a Tristan Wirfs. You know, that's that's no shade or disrespect to, to Barrett and Davis, but you have some depth there of, of guys that have come in and played this year and been extremely productive in doing so. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, that's that shows the value of depth. You know what I mean? Like, And it wasn't that long ago where if either Carlton or Jamel were out that we'd be in full-blown panic mode and and all that stuff. So to have to have that improved play from Zion, so that you can deal with an injury like this and and still be somewhat confident, it also shows you know uh, truthfully how how shallow uh, the Saints' receiver depth is. You're not really scared of of who they have to try to take advantage of your own depth. So you know it, it kind of goes 
both ways. I think if you're playing, you know, the San Francisco 49ers without Carlton Davis, then you're a little bit more nervous about who, yeah. who's going to line up against their third, fourth TVs in the rotation and all those things. So speaking of those, New Orleans Saints, boo, um, out for that game for them is offensive tackle Ryan Ramchek, safety Lonnie Johnson, wide receiver Michael, Michael Thomas, and Marshawn Lattimore, both from the Ohio State University. They're both still on IR, not expected to return. I don't think Michael Thomas is coming back for the rest of the year. Uh, James Jarko, not familiar with who Michael Thomas is, and that's okay. Questionable for this game, defensive end Isaiah Foskey, punter Lou Headley. That's 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 huge. That's, that's huge. Headley. Um, what did I say? No, I, I mean, you said it right, but... Oh, those, I thought you were correcting me. No, no, I just went, it's Headley. Uh, gotcha. People who watch Mel Brooks movies will get that reference. Yeah, that's, I'm not one of those people. Um, running back Alvin Kamara is questionable with an illness. Um, so, you know, apparently the loose cannons trip made it to uh, New Orleans before the Saints traveled to Tampa and, and did some dirty work. Running back Kendra Miller, I'm not, I'm not advocating bioterrorism defensive end Peyton Turner is also not it's questionable to play this game sorry uh cleared is safety Jordan Howden defensive end Cam Jordan Boo er, center Eric McCoy and wide receiver Chris Olave from the Ohio State University yeah Michael Thomas and Marshawn Lattimore doing their Marvin Harrison Jr. impression not playing. oh get out of uh, here but, <laughs> no no uh, and, and I had to throw that out there because I just saw it come up on the crawl I don't blame Marvin Harrison Jr. at all for not playing this is a meaningless game for Ohio State you and I were talking pre-show about it uh the dude's gonna be a top five pick protect your body uh protect your draft status protect your uh your bank account uh there's no need for him to play but yeah uh the the Ryan Ramchick injury that's that's a huge one for the Saints uh, I don't know if, if the Lonnie Johnson is going to hurt the Saints too bad on the back end. Ross talked about it on the crossover. They really do have uh, a solid back end of that defense uh, with, with all their safeties in their corner. So even without Lattimore, even without Johnson, they're still going to be in decent shape. I just don't know if they if they match up well, even when fully healthy, against all of the pass catchers of Tampa over, you know, especially the way they played over the course of the last month. And then, yeah, it, it's definitely keep an eye on, on Alvin Kamara. I'm going to talk more about him in a little bit, but you know, we have seen some players miss this year because of illness. In, in fact, it was, it was either Jalen hurts. I think it, it was, it was Jalen hurts. who was basically a game time decision because of the flu. And so it's, it's tis the season. So, you know, Alvin Kamara being out is going to hurt uh, the Saints a whole heck of a lot more, I think, than uh, than Michael Thomas or Marshawn Lattimore missing this game. Yeah, absolutely. There, there is a touch of the flu going around. There is a touch of the COVID going around. I said it. I said it. I said the word. It's going around. Uh, uh, I I did want to. I did want to jump in the chat really quick, David, before we move on. Uh, ben Rosa said that he can't watch this live, but he wanted to drop a question. And he said, is it safe to say that Bowles and Canal's job is safe? Personally, it's hard to gauge improvements on Bowles' end because the Bucks haven't really faced elite teams. Canales has improved a lot. I actually talk about this on the Blitz on 10 Tampa Bay Sunday morning. That is going to be the Locked on Bucks burning question of the week. But uh short answer yes i i think over the course of the last month todd bowles has saved his job it looks like the bucks are pretty much shoe ins for the division anything can happen they can choke away these last two games that we're having a different conversation but it looks like todd bowles is going to return with todd bowles will be dave canales with dave canales probably means you're looking at trying to figure out uh you know, a way to keep baker mayfield and continue some continuity and uh, familiarity with with the players, with the offense, and with the team and coaching staff in general. Yes to all of that. <laughs> fully, fully agree. Spoiler alert: I am not on the burning question, but I agree with everything that Mister Yarko just said. Um, we haven't even caught up in the live chat yet. Y'all are y'all are crazy. I don't even. I can't even get all the I way to the bottom of the chat. chat before there's more. It's it's amazing. Um, so we will continue to scroll through that as we go, but we will also tell you how. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers clinch their third straight NFC South Division title. Coming up next on today's episode of Locked On Bucks, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to have as many top tier candidates as possible to interview. And that's why you need to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. 
And LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place for you to hire. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. Thankfully, with LinkedIn, the process is intuitive, quick, and it's easy. They've even launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even easier and quicker. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thanks again for making a locked on bucks first listener, first view today and every day, every dares. Thanks for coming back and coming through on a regular basis like you do. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. Uh, Continuing on with today's episode, we are going to get into our keys to victory. You know, James, I, I feel like these episodes have really kind of turned into I show up at the end of the week and basically just cause you confusion and trash talk for the first segment. And then we get down to business in the second segment. And I actually contribute something beyond clicking on live chat comments. Um, But that being said, I'm going to let you speak important stuff first. I'm going to let you give your key to victory before I give mine. Yeah. My, my key to victory in this one uh, is contingent on his availability because I went into this episode with the thought of the the biggest key for the Buccaneers is to contain Alvin Kamara. Now, he didn't participate in, uh, in practice on Friday because of that illness, so he's questionable. Uh, I assume that he's going to play, but you never really know with some of these things. But you go back to that Week 4 game, and the offense really went through Alvin Kamara. It wasn't an overly successful offense. They only put up nine points, but... Alvin Kamara was the go-to guy in that game. He had 11 carries for 51 yards, 13 receptions for only 33 yards. So this is actually the week four game is a solid example of containing Kamara. 24 touches for 84 yards. That's three and a half yards per touch. Didn't score a touchdown. If Alvin Kamara gets going, Derek Carr is going to get awfully comfortable dropping back and throwing passes and it could be a long day for the Bucks defense because you have that threat of Kamara in both the run game and the short passing game. Now, the New Orleans Saints are only two and four this season when Kamara has a hundred plus all purpose yards, but the team is scoring higher than their season season average when he does do that. So it's been the defense that has let down the Saints in those instances. So when Kamara gets going and he has those 100-plus all-purpose yards, the offense is putting up points. Over, you know, If you force Derek Carr to beat you and you don't allow Kamara to run wild through the first, second, third levels of the defense on short passes and run plays, you're going to set yourself up for success. Over the last five weeks, Derek Carr's been sacked seven times. He has nine touchdown passes, but he has four interceptions and two fumbles. So you're looking at, what is that, like 1.3 touchdowns per uh, turnover ratio in, in that instance. So yeah, as they've done the last couple of weeks, the Buccaneers defense needs to force their opponent to be one dimensional and then really start to tee off on a suspect Saints offensive line and a quarterback that you can force into some serious mistakes. Yeah, absolutely. No, I mean, that's, you know, we have actually become the show, I think, James, that every offseason or not every offseason, every postseason, we kind of want to remind everybody like, hey, running backs are important. Um, you know what I mean? So, Demon Hunter, tonight's show could be your last listen of the day, certainly. Um, if you or really, it could be your... If you were really yeah. loyal, it ought to be your first. Just saying. Just saying. That, that is true. Or it could be your first listen tomorrow as you go back and you you do a little uh, you do a little audio review of the show and, and listen to it twice in case yeah. you miss anything. Yep. And, you know, not everyone come through your life, Demon Hunter. So let's not be let's not be live All right. People, <laughs> can, people can listen on recording and it could be their first listen of the day. So. Let's be respectful here. Um, my key to the game, James. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> we're 14 minutes in. I haven't said anything actually productive this entire episode. So my key to the Buccaneers winning this game this weekend is being creative in the passing game. I think that Dave Canales, to the point that some of our live chatters 
have said has definitely, definitely uh, to to steal a term for my children, gotten into his bag a little bit. He's been calling some really good games, and and Baker Mayfield has been executing those games uh, very well. And I think this one's going to be a little bit tougher than some people uh, imagine it could be. Saints defense has only given up 300 plus net passing yards once this season. That came last weekend against the Los Angeles Rams. So at least it's recent. You know what I mean? Maybe let's build upon that. Uh, but they've also only allowed 250 plus one more time than that. So that's two times total. That means 13 times this season. NFL teams have failed to get even 250 net passing yards. And of course, that's net passing yards, not total passing yards, all those other things. There's different ways to measure stats. But it still means the New Orleans Saints, even with some of the injuries they've had, even with some of the struggles that they've had on either side of the ball, have not been getting dominated on just that one side of the ball. While the Buccaneers have certainly gotten better on the ground and in their usage of running back Rashad White, they need to threaten in the passing game to keep the New Orleans Saints defense honest. But taking shots after shot, after shot, after shot, it works for Little John. It's not going to work for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers if they try to do that this weekend. This, to me, looks like a game that really is going to accentuate Baker Mayfield's arm talent. Like if Baker Mayfield really wants an extension with the Buccaneers, and if the Buccaneers really want that extension with Baker Mayfield, this is the kind of game that can really show that that, that needs to be put in place because it's the rival, it's the hated Saints, it's the division championship opportunity, like – it's all these things rolled up into one, and it is a secondary that is, again, not known for giving up too many passing yards on a week-in, week-out basis in net yardage. So Baker Mayfield's going to be able to have to make all the throws. He's going to have to make them in different windows. He's going to have to make them with different timing, different depths, all of these things, and he's going to have to make the smart throws. Now, he's done it, right? Like, this isn't like we're asking Baker to do something that he hasn't already done this season, but we need him to do it again. The Buccaneers need him to do it again. If he can, then I think the Buccaneers – come away with the win. And honestly, this feels like a game where, you know, look, you're going to start off with Mike, Chris, Rashad, you know what I mean? K. Otten. But if the Saints defense comes in and they're, they're up to the task and they're going to make this hard on you, I think this is a game where you need to have a little bit of a special sauce, a little special something set aside for Chase Edmonds. And if the Saints come through countering everything you're doing, unleash that Chase Edmonds on and say, okay, you saw all the stuff coming that you know is coming. You know number 13 number 14 coming. You know Rashad's coming. Even K. Dotton, like he's not super well-known in the NFL, but I don't think he's going to surprise a team like the New Orleans Saints. But Chase Edmonds could be your surprise. Trey Palmer could be your surprise. That's where I think this is a Chase Edmonds game potentially to where we see if Dave Canales can really draw up some things and Baker Mayfield and Chase can execute that and use him where he's a little bit more of the traditional receiving type back, whereas Rashad, uh, like I told you, pregame or pregame, pre-episode is more of a – screen he's a, he's a screen benefiter right he, he really does the screen well, screen game well but i think chase is kind of better at the wheel routes the outs and ups or the ups and outs the option routes things like that yeah no doubt about it and and obviously chase has been getting more involved in the offense over the course of the last month you know during this this four game win streak i did see uh, Malcolm in the chat, I, I put the comment up. I'll throw it up again real quick. Uh, he said, don't count out the Saints. Nobody gave us a chance when we played them in the playoffs either. These upsets happen all the time. I'd still put my money on the Buccaneers and Baker Mayfield. Yeah, I mean, the Saints aren't out here playing for nothing. They are still in a position where they can win the division. So this game means a ton to them, and it's something that I talked to Ross about on the crossover that you don't want to see the Buccaneers get complacent and kind of get get a little too hyped on their own press clippings because of this win streak because the Saints can come in and punch you in the mouth. This is a a Saints team that has dominated the Buccaneers over over a long stretch of time. The Bucs got their revenge in in 2020 winning the playoff game, but even after that Tom Brady and the Bucs were still losing to the Saints in the regular season. You know, this is there there's a reason why uh the Saints lead the all-time series by 14 games. So, yeah, yeah you you can't come in and, and think that this is going to be an easy game by any stretch of the imagination. It wouldn't be panic time if the Bucs do lose because you still have the Panthers in Week 18. You beat them. You still win the division. But it would be awfully nice to go ahead and clinch it with a week to spare. But, David, we are going to talk about our bold predictions, our players of the game, and our score predictions coming up next here on a live episode of Locked on Bucks. 
Why root for your team on an empty stomach? This episode is brought to you by DoorDash. Week 17's weekend schedule is right around the corner, so be sure you order on DoorDash and save on football watch party favorites like pizza, wings, soda, burgers, just about anything you could want to settle in for some late-season football. If you're a procrastinator like me, kick back and kick off with unbeatable deals on everything you need for your watch party or your tailgate. Sometimes I like a, I like a classic chain like Buffalo Wild Wings. I know what I'm going to get, and oftentimes my local franchise is listed as one of the fastest available options so I can order a kickoff when I'm not at the stadium and get my order with plenty of game left to go. Get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order when you download the DoorDash app and enter the code LOCKED23. That's 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order when you download the DoorDash app and enter code LOCKED23. Subject to change terms apply this episode is also brought to you by FanDuel as the weather gets colder the NFL offers stay hot on FanDuel right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bets that's 150 bucks if your team wins the largest spread this weekend belongs to the Buffalo Bills who are minus 13.5 point favorites and minus 850 on the money line the closest margin of victory predicted belongs to the Minnesota Vikings who are just one and a half point favorites with a money line of minus 112 if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is easy to use, and there's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and secure your wins as the season winds down. FanDuel, official partner of the National Football League. Wrapping things up here on a live edition of the Locked On Bucks podcast. And the Buccaneers play the Saints this Sunday at 1 o'clock Eastern time inside Raymond James Stadium in Tampa, Florida. Catch every snap of the Buccaneers hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the Sirius XM app. Just search Buccaneers. And while you're there, you might just hear a familiar face or a familiar voice from this familiar face during the game. David, uh, I, I had to laugh. Um, I, I used DoorDash today, and nice. for lunch, I had my my 15-layer lasagna, and it was delicious. Yeah. It was so good. Oh, it was terrible. <laughs> All right. It is prediction time. Uh, of course, Evan wasn't on Wednesday's episode. He took the week off celebrating the holiday. Can't blame him for that. But I did reach out, and I got his score prediction. He didn't provide the bold or the player because I didn't ask for it, but we do have Evan Klosky's score prediction coming up in a little bit, but let's start things off with the bold prediction. I've talked about this all week long. I am speaking it into existence. Baker Mayfield and Mike Evans are going to connect for the first two touchdowns of the game for the Bucks, both hitting career highs together. They're going to tie their career high together for the first touchdown that the Bucs score. Then the second touchdown that the Bucs score, they're each setting career highs in those respective uh, stat columns. Uh, speaking into existence, man, uh, if if the Bucs are going to win this game, it's it's going to be it's going to be on the shoulders of Baker. It's going to be on Mike Evans. It's going to be on Chris Godwin. Uh, get get Mike his, his touchdown catches. Yeah. Um... Get Scotty J seventy thousand dollars apparently. Whoa. Yeah, no joke. Did you? Uh, well, I, I saw the comment earlier. Uh, I don't know if you if you put it up there, but uh, he put he put money on the Bucks at fourteen hundred to one to win the conference while the quarterback competition was going on. So if the Bucks win the NFC, uh, my my dude Scotty J is is going to be rolling in dough, and he's also going to get our Venmo account information. Yeah, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> my bold prediction is that Antoine Winfield secures the triad of turnovers. I don't even know if that's the right way to say that, but he's going to force a fumble. Trio. Trio. He's going to force a fumble. Yep. He is going to recover a fumble, and he's going to get an interception. Fausto, I love you. We can't post those, man. You can't. I can't post those on the screen if you're going to write it like that. I get what you're doing, but I can't. I can't post. <laughs> <laughs> um, Antoine Winfield, triad of turnovers, trio of turnovers, force fumble, fumble recovery, interception. I'm not even going to say he's going to force the or for, recover the fumble that he forced, but he could. That still counts. Uh, but yeah, force fumble, fumble recovery, interception. The fact that he is my individual defensive player on fantasy and is my championship round has nothing to do with my bowl prediction. Um, player prediction is going to be Baker Mayfield. Like I said, with my 
key to the game. I think this is a Baker Mayfield game. Like this is where he shows off his arm talent. This is where he shows, uh, you know, I, I want to say once and for all because it is, you know, the Saints rivalry. No, notwithstanding, this isn't exactly the 49ers or anything like that. But you know, this is this is a game where Baker Mayfield can really kind of cement. I think even the people who are still kind of detractors um, and not feeling like Baker can be, you know, a quarterback for this team for at least a little while. Uh, this is this is the weekend that he can really kind of put that to uh, to rest with a solid game uh, against the New Orleans Saints. Uh, real quick, going back to your uh, bold prediction, that's just Antoine's weekly. I, it's just Antoine being Antoine like week Listen, in and week out. That's just how is, he is. I need it to happen this weekend. <laughs> I speak it into existence. But I, I, like I did want to drop a drop hat trick. I like hat trick. We can use hat trick. Okay. Hat trick. Uh, uh, turnover. Yeah. I don't know. This is something that I mentioned on an episode earlier this week as well, but I want to drop it again, courtesy of, of the fantastic Greg Allman. Uh, Antoine Winfield Jr. is having an unprecedented run here. Five sacks, five forced fumbles, four fumble recoveries, three interceptions. That has only happened once in the last 25 years where a player has even had three of each of those stats, and it was James Ferrier who had three sacks, three forced fumbles, three fumble recoveries, and four interceptions. So Antoine Winfield Jr., uh, him. Antoine Hemfield forever and for always. My predicted player of the game, and I think I saw Demon Hunter talking about him in the chat, it's Yaya Diaby. There is no Shaq Barrett. It is time for the rookie to shine. I called him out on this show a couple weeks ago, and ever since then, he's made me put my big old foot in my mouth. He leads rookies in sacks. He is second among rookies in tackles for a loss, and he is going to get a massive spike in snap count this week. He has to make the most of it. He needs to live in that backfield because you're not likely going to get a whole lot of help on the other side from Joe Tryon, Shoyinka, and he is also going to play a pivotal role in my key to the game, and that's containing Alvin Kamara off of the edge, looking to add to those tackle for loss numbers. And here's, here's a fun little factoid. I mentioned he's second among rookies in tackles for loss. He trails the leader by one. That leader is his teammate, Kalijah Kansi. So he's he's going to have to um, outshine Kalijah in this one to be the number one rookie in sacks, the number one rookie in tackles for loss, but he absolutely can do it. Uh, Yaya Diaby has been a lot of fun to watch, and he's going to have a big game. Yep, and we also have our weekly call for Zion McCollum to get an interception. I don't think, you know what, maybe this – Maybe this will jinx it, or maybe I'm going to have the greatest bold prediction of all time. Zion McCollum is never getting an interception, ever, Whoa. ever, through the duration Whoa. of his career. He's Unless a ball gets thrown so hard that it gets wedged into his face mask, that dude cannot catch a cold. How many times has he had passes just drop directly into his arms, and then it's almost like, he spazzes and then like throws the ball up in the air and, and can't haul it in. Um, so yeah, you, you every week say this is the week I say never going to happen. He's going to be the only corner in NFL history to start a minimum of 25 games and never get an interception. I don't know if that's a real stat. I'm throwing it out there, but I would have to think that it's somewhat close. Um, so yeah, I hope I come on here Sunday for the live and say, see, my reverse jinx worked. Let's talk about score predictions, of course, on the crossover Thursday. Episode I have that I had with Ross. Oh, okay. My bad. My bad. Because of what you just said, Zion McCollum's first interception will come at the end of the wild card round to clinch a Buccaneers win to the divisional round. Because in a lot of ways, it'll be his first career interception, but in some ways, it also will not. Because when it comes to regular season oh. stats, he will still have zero. All right. That's just the McCollum way of doing it. If 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 you know Zion, if you know his history, if you if you watch the episode with his former college head coach, that's just the Zion McCollum way of doing things, man. It's gonna it's gonna take him a minute. And that would be the most Dak Prescott thing ever. The the most 
Dak Prescott thing ever is to throw an interception to a guy that has literally dropped like four in a season. Uh, yeah. All right. Score predictions on the crossover Thursday episode. I said the Bucks are going to win this one 27 to 14. Evan Klosky texted me and he said he's taking the Buccaneers 27 to 23. David, what is your score prediction for this one? Are we talking about postseason? Are we talking about playoffs? Playoffs? You know, you and Evan predict 27 points apiece. And, and I got to be honest, I'm a little disappointed. I think both of you are, are just a little high on the Buccaneers score. I told you guys during the course of this episode, the Saints defense, I think, is going to do a little bit better than everybody thinks they are. So you and Evan predicting the Buccaneers score 27 points. Sorry, everybody. That's probably not going to happen. I got the Bucks at 26, and I got the Saints at 17. So I'm sorry that Evan and James are overselling this thing to you guys. You know, I just I, realized my prediction is basically a missed extra point. Well, uh, that's what I was going to ask. Are you disrespecting Chase McLaughlin by saying I'm, he's going to miss an extra point, or are you saying that this is a Chase McLaughlin game and he kicks four field goals? So full disclosure, Dustin Lewis of Bucks Game Day does our weekly staff predictions, and he was harassing me for my prediction because usually I'm not I'm one of the first, but this week I was one of the last, and I was like, okay, sorry, here's my prediction: twenty six seventeen bucks go. Like that's that's literally that's that's the amount of thought I put into that score prediction this week, guys. All right, well you heard it here. Uh, David Harrison hates Chase McLaughlin and everything that he stands for. With that, we are going to bid you all a fair ado. Thank you to all of you that jumped in on the chat. You guys have been awesome, man. You guys have really come through strong, uh, you know, all all season long, but especially this week. You guys have been killing it. Uh, please check out everything going on over at BucksNation.com and on BucksGameDay.com. Follow everything on Twitter at LockedOnBucks, at JRCO underscore Bucks, at DHarrison82. Join the Locked On Bucks insiders by going to JoinSubtext.com slash LockedOnBucks. And be sure to uh, subscribe and turn on those notifications so you know when I'm going to go live on Sunday for the live post-game reaction episode. Hope you all have an absolutely outstanding day. Stay safe, stay healthy, fire the cannons. Thank you so much for joining us right here on Locked on Bucks, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. 